Good morning, IED. Hope you all had a great break. We're going to start off this quarter with a project that students really like called the Super Lego Project. And one of the reasons they really like this project is because we get to work with Legos. And Legos are fun. It's a pretty nifty project. We make some really cool things. Um, in addition to this, we're going to make Le Lego men or Lego women. And we're going to put them in an environment, which I'm going to develop later. And later on, we're going to make cars, not out of Legos, but like realistic looking cars in Autodesk Inventor. And we're going to put them next to your Lego people so they can look like they have all these cool vehicles next to them. And it's going to be pretty slick. Now to start off this project, uh, let me first show you something I made a few years ago. This is my Lego Link. It is 844 pieces, way beyond the required amount of pieces for this project, which I believe is 200. Um, and it looks just pixelated, but the cool thing is if you zoom into it, you'll notice that it has Legos in it, and they're all different sizes, different colors, um, to make this entire assembly. Now, of course, I didn't go and make every single Lego piece. That would be really time consuming. So what I did was I used something called parametric modeling. Parametric modeling is when you're able to take a single piece that you've made and you're able to quickly change a few numbers on it and it will change it into a different piece. And it sounds a little, you know, intense, but it's really not once you get the hang of it. And you can make something like all these different types of Legos really quickly. So in order to save time and to like speed build things, we're going to be using parametric modeling to make Legos of all different sizes very quickly. And I'm going to show you all that as soon as we get started, which is about now. Okay, so to start this project, we want to go to iPro first, go to new, and whoops, let me just click that, and standard.ipt. We start off all projects the same. We start with a 2D sketch, and we're going to draw out a rectangle. Um, this is going to be a rectangle for a 2 by 6 Lego piece. So it's going to look something like this, except instead of being 2 by 3, it's going to be 2 by 6. So there'll be like another one of these like side by side to it, but we're all we're building it as a single piece. I just wanted to show you that for you uh, visual learners. Yeah. Okay, so that was a 2 by 3 but we're making a 2 by 6 obviously. So I'm going to go ahead and dimension the top of this. So I click dimension The top. Now, this might look familiar to you all. We do this a lot. We always dimension things. But something you might not have noticed is that this number over here is being stored somewhere. It's being stored in the value right now D0. Just like in math, we can store values in things. For example, I could say x is equal to 3. E, e 3. And y is equal to 5 or 6. I'm bad today on clicking on the keyboard. They can be equal to different things. Just like in this program, we could say D0 is equal to 1.65. Just like that. And that's the same thing as in math if it was like X is equal to 1.65. So everything we do in 3D modeling is being stored inside of a variable. It does it for us. We just didn't realize it until now, so we couldn't make use of it. So I'm going to set this to the correct value for a 2 by 6, which is 1.875. And I worked that out because I know that each piece, like each little peggy thing on a Lego, is equal to 0.3125 if I calculated that correctly. So that if I had six of them together, it would be this number times six, 
which would be 1.875, which is why I do that over there. I'm also going to dimension the height, and you'll notice right away that this is no longer d0, it's d1. That's because this is d0. A, a single variable cannot hold two values. So d1, since this is only a 2, 1 and 2, we're only going to use 0.3125 times 2, which in our case is 0.625. So here is our 6 by 2 Lego piece. Now, let's go ahead and do some parametric modeling. I'm going to head over to the Manage tab, and then I'm going to go to the option here called Parameters. Inside of Parameters, you should get an option like this. And lo and behold, it has every single thing that we've done so far, and it also states its value in terms of an equation, which in this case we don't have an equation, so it's just showing the value, as well as its real life value, which should be the same as the equation value because we didn't actually use any equations. Okay, hopefully you can all see that. Now we're going to make it so that we can easily change a few numbers and the Lego piece will conform to whatever we want it to do. So in order to do that, we're going to add some user parameters, stuff that we make. So in order to do that, go to Add Numeric, and you'll notice it created a user parameter for us. So let's say the length of our Lego is going to be X. So I'm going to say X. And I'm going to say X is going to be equal to 1. Not 1 inch, just 1. And I think it should, okay, it doesn't want us. Can I delete that? Cool. Um, instead, just make it 1UL. Um, in order to do that, go to Unit Type, click here, and just type UL, click OK, and then change it from IN to UL. Um, what that does is this makes it unitless. We don't want to multiply inches by inches because then we have inches squared and that could potentially cause problems later on. So we're going to say x is equal to 1 and I'm going to add another numeric. I'm going to create y. This is going to be the width of our Lego. Um, it's also going to be equal to 1. Oops, let me just do that. And we're also going to create a z. Z is going to be the thickness of our Lego, um, but we can't really see that because we haven't extruded it out yet. So I'm just creating it, um, you know, preemptively so that we have it set up so we don't have to create Z once we do that. So I have X, Y, and Z. Now, for D0 and D1, what I'm going to do is I'm going to like inject these into those so that they can be controlled really easily. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So instead of D0 equal to 1.875, I'm going to make it equal to 0.3125 times x. And you'll notice right away that it shrank really small, and it has this weird fx thing. That just means there's an equation controlling it now. And I'm going to change y as well to 0.3125 times y. And you'll notice that it's really small there. So you'll be like, Mr. Z, that is not a 2x6 Lego piece. Correct. Right now, it's a 1x1 one one Lego piece. If I want a 6x2 Lego piece, I'm going to change the 1 here to a 6, and I'm going to change the 1 for the thickness to a 2. Boom. Notice what happened. This is 1.875 again. This is 0.625. And it even confirms it over here in the model values. 1.875, 0.625. We now have a Lego piece that we can easily control the thickness or the, the amount of pegs we want on it. Oh, I want a 6 by 6 Lego piece. Just jump in to let me close this. Just jump into the parameters. Boop-a-doo. 
Go over here to where it says 2, switch it to 6, boom. Check out your Lego piece, a 6x6 six six Lego piece. So we can easily control any of the values now. Just because we set up the parameters to get the uh, dimensions to move, aka parametric modeling. So I'm going to leave this as a 2x6, I'm going to click done, and I'm going to go ahead and finish that sketch. So extrude, and instead of 1, we're going to extrude this out 0.375 inches for our Lego. Looks lovely. Now is it really 0.375 or is it, head over to manage, parameters, is it instead of 0.375 it's 0.375 times Z. Because if it's 0.375 times Z and I want a Lego that is twice as tall, I click 2, boom, changes it immediately. And all I had to do was multiply it by that number. Now we have our Lego piece under full control because we set this up early. And we're going to set up a few other things so that not only can it make the box really quickly, it can make the pegs really quickly, the insides really quickly, the Lego word really quickly. Um, although I'm not sure if we're going to put that because um, the copyright and such. Um, but we have this. Cool. So that concludes the first video. I will see you in the second. Peace. Bring me the orb. Why exactly? What? I mean, all you do is sit in that chair all day long. Is not having the orb going to change anything about your daily routine? I will rule the universe and sit in this chair. So bring me the orb, boy. Why don't you get up out of that chair and make me? I can't get out of this chair. It's not my time. Plus, my legs are asleep. You're so weird, Batman. Infinity War. <laughs>